Video games are commonly seen as nothing more than a simple time waster or a toy for young children. But if you grew up like me, you would know that this is simply not the case. Beneath the surface, you will find that video games are actually an effective storytelling medium that has its own advantages compared to more traditional methods. Even seemingly simple games can tell a story. Using the two most iconic video game characters as examples, Super Mario tells the story of an immigrant who finds his place in a new world, freeing said world from the rule of the evil King Bowser while Sonic the Hedgehog tells the story of a freedom fighter, saving the environment from uh, the corrupt scientist Dr. Robotnik. Over the past decade and a half, games have become increasingly more accessible to create. The barrier to entry is lowering because of lower development costs, easier to use software, and increased interest. This allows for even inexperienced developers to be able to make their own games, allowing many to express themselves through this medium. The biggest strength of video games as a storytelling medium is that they are interactive. Instead of interpreting the perspective of a character, games are capable of putting you into that perspective, letting you experience it more directly and pushing the game's messages onto the player more strongly. Many games attempt to do this. For example, Celeste is a 2D action platformer developed and published by independent studio Matt Makes Games. Released in 2018 on all major platforms, Celeste follows Madeline, a girl who suffers from depression and social anxiety, climbing the titular Celeste Mountain in hopes of overcoming the aforementioned problems. The main writer for Celeste, Maddie Thorson, has confirmed in a blog post that Madeline is transgender feminine, and it is also said in the blog post that the character indirectly represents Thorson's own experiences. With this in mind, you can apply a feminist lens to the game's story and connect the psychoanalytic themes with feminist theory. When you apply this lens onto the game's story, you will start to notice how the story contents connect to feminist theory, as gender dysphoria, a dissatisfaction towards one's assigned gender, tends to cause problems such as depression and anxiety, especially when gender norms and stereotypes are imposed onto people who are suffering from it. The gameplay loop also reflects Madeline's story nicely, as the game's levels become progressively difficult as she advances on her journey. This gameplay loop symbolizes her overcoming depression and breaking herself free from gender norms. With the help of her friends, she is able to overcome these problems and express her true self. Hotline Miami is a top-down shooter developed by independent studio Denton Games and published by independent games platform Devolver Digital. Released in 2012 on all major platforms, Hotline Miami follows Jacket, an ex-military veteran who was tasked by an organization known as 50 Blessings to kill people in the Russian Mafia. Written by Jonathan Soderstrom and Dennis Wedin, both of whom collectively form Denaton Games, Hotline Miami, despite being violent in nature, has messages that show the hideous consequences of the acts of violence that you are encouraged to perform throughout the course of the game, and makes you question your morals. For example, various intermissions throughout the game take place as dream sequences, which are a look into the psyche and conscience of Jacket and asks the player questions about their morals. The player is also told to walk all the way back to the beginning of levels once they are completed to show them the amount of damage and destruction they have caused. Near the end of the game, spoiler alert, it is revealed that Jacket was in a coma the whole time, and the events of the game were him reminiscing about events that had already happened. Despite the game showing you the inhumane nature of violence, Jacket still continues to kill more people and turns himself into the police after finishing what he had started on his own. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is a 3D action-adventure game developed and published by Nintendo. Released in 2000 on the Nintendo 64 and subsequently re-released on later systems, the game follows series protagonist Link in his efforts to save a parallel world from the moon falling into the Earth. Written by Mitsuhiro Takano, Shigeru Miyamoto, and Yoshiaki Koizumi, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask contains psychoanalytic elements that represent and rationalize mental health issues such as depression and grief. Unlike Celeste, where we view these elements from a feminist lens, we will view them in a psychoanalytic lens here. In the game, you explore the parallel world known as Termina. Unlike the series' primary setting in Hyrule, Termina has more of a gloomy and depressing atmosphere. Skull Kid, who is overcome with depression and loneliness, unleashes the moon onto the world, as his story arc, along with yours, represents the five stages of grief. 
Some characters of the game represent the Freudian tripartite mind. Link represents the ego, the balance caught in between the antics of the other sides. Majora and his mask represent the id, which are the mind's primal urges. And the fierce deity, a character revealed later in the game, is the superego, or the morality-focused side of the tripartite. I can go on all day, but as you can see, video games can be a very effective medium for telling stories, and they have their advantages to being used as a medium, like with other forms such as books or movies. It helps put players into perspectives and scenarios that would have been much harder to accomplish in other mediums such as film or literature. There are many games that I haven't mentioned that also tell great stories, such as the post-colonial criticism from Fallout New Vegas, Marxist criticism from Cyberpunk 2077, or more psychoanalysis from games like Undertale. It just goes to show that there are so many stories that can be told through video games, and that the medium has a lot of potential for it. I feel like games are commonly misrepresented in the media, and while I do agree that there are some problems, especially in regard to some practices in the video game industry, the same can be said about any other influential medium. In fact, many then new forms of media have suffered a similar fate when they were first brought into the public's awareness. So next time you hear about a game, a few good things to think about would be the story that is being told, the perspective that is being shown, and perhaps even the new ideas that are being brought to the table. Because you never know what amazing new experiences and stories are being told through this truly underrated medium.